Okay, today's daf is Kufei Amud Aleph. We are going to start three lines from the top where it says Rav Hananya, which uh, according to the note on the side should be Rav Chinena. Okay, so Rav Chinena Bar Shelamya. So once upon a time, Rav Chinena Bar Shelamya and the students of Rav were sitting at a meal. Vekae Alayu Rav Hamnuna Saba. And Rav Hamnuna Saba, Rav Hamnuna the elder, was the one serving the meal, hosting the meal, I suppose, or uh, running the meal. Amrule, they said to him, Zil Chazi imakdish yoma. So they said to him, "Please go outside and see if the day ha- if the day has be- been sanctified." In other words, go out and see if Shabbat started, if the uh, if the sun has set, because they were eating on Friday afternoon. And the question was, has the sun set? And if the sun has set, so then we uh, we need to stop our what we're doing, eating, and and we need to make yiddush. Right. In other words, because now we have to establish our meal as a Shabbat meal. And Rashi explains, Ba'akirat Ashulhan. They would take the table away. In other words, they would take the food away. And they would start fresh uh, with a, uh, you know, as the, uh, you know, they would start their eating fresh as a Shabbat meal. So Amar Lehu, he said to them, Lo Tzrichitu. Shabbata kava'a nafsha. You don't need to take the table away and start all over again. Shabbat establishes itself. In other words, even though you're eating already, you started eating on Friday, you eat into Friday night, Shabbat establishes the meal as a, as a Seudat Shabbat. It doesn't matter that you started it out as a Friday Seudat. There's no action you have to do, like removing the table and bringing it back to show that it's a new Shabbat meal. The fact that you go into Shabbat, Shabbat is what sanctifies the meal in and of itself. <laughs> you weren't allowed to eat. Um, well, you you started this meal when it was still permitted to eat, and you uh, went into Shabbat. Okay, so uh, as Ra- and Rashbam explains, le seudata that Shabbat establishes the seudat de me'achar shi oseret alenu lechol me'ata b'lo kiddush, because since now we have to make kiddush, everybody agrees that. In other words, if the sun went down. They now have to make kiddush. The only question is, do we have to take our food away and start like it's a new meal? Pretend like we weren't eating before? Everyone agrees you have to make kiddush. So according to Rav Hamnuna, he's saying all you have to do is make kiddush. You don't have to take the table away, put it back. And we learned in the beginning of this parak that there's three opinions. One opinion was Rabbi Yehuda. That says you have to start, that you have to stop eating and start completely fresh, take everything away, start completely fresh. Rabbi Yose said that you can continue eating until you're done, and then whenever you're done, then you make Yiddush. Right? You don't, he says you don't even have to stop eating. And then you had the third opinion, which was, Pores Mapau Mekadesh. You just, you don't have to remove the food, and you're not allowed to continue. But what you do is you make Yiddush in the middle of the meal, and you continue. Rabbi Hanina here doesn't have the food. No, well, he said, let's see if Shabbat started. If Shabbat started, we better remove the table and start all over again, like Rabbi Yehuda would say. That's what Rabbi Yehuda would say. So Rabbi Hamdunah is saying, no, no, no. We hold Pores Mapao Mekadesh that all you have to do is say Kiddush in the middle and then it becomes a Shabbat Seudah. You don't have to do anything else. <laughs> so the Amar Rav, because Rav said, Kishim Shabbat Kova'at Lema'aser, just like Shabbat is, Shabbat is Kova'at Lema'aser, which means to say that if you have produce uh, that is... Um, that you're eating casually, achilat arai. Okay, you don't have to take maaser from the um, from the grain that's that you're eating as an achilat arai. If you're just taking like a bite of it, you can do that before you've taken the maaser. Once you've already sat down and made a full meal, then you have to uh, you know then you have to take maaser before you're allowed to eat it. But if you're just eating casually, let's say you're out in the field and you're piling up the grain, and as you're piling up the grain, you just want to take a bite of it, that's okay. But on Shabbat, any eating that you do is considered kavua. Any eating that you do is considered substantive. So we don't make a distinction <coughs> between achilat arai and achilat keva. Okay? Anything that you do on Shabbat is keva. Anything you do on Shabbat has significance. So in the same way that your eating of grain is given significance by Shabbat, even if you're only taking a tiny bit, because it's Shabbat, it, it attains importance, and therefore you, have to separ- you would have to separate maaser from the grain before taking even one bite of the grain that's untithed. So too, Shabbat transforms your seuda. You don't have to start the seuda over again by taking the food away, akirat shulchan, and putting it back. All you need to do is 
uh, stop what you're doing and say the Kiddush and, and, and it's good enough. Okay, so now Savur Mina, they understood from this Ki de kavala kiddush kach kavala havdala, that the same thing should apply at Motzei Shabbat. In other words, this is what I was saying inside. That Betzeta Kochavim, when the stars come out on Motzei Shabbat, automatically one should have to make havdala. Right? You shouldn't be able to continue your eating. Once Shabbat comes, just like when Shabbat comes, it requires you to stop what you're doing and make Kiddush and then continue. So too, when Shabbat ends, it should require you to make Havdalah immediately and then continue. You shouldn't be able to continue your Sudash Lishi without Havdalah. Ram said to them, This is what Rav said, It only works It only works in one direction. When Shabbat starts, Shabbat push, stops you from being able to eat. You have to make Kiddush. But Shabbat ends doesn't force you to make Havdalah. If you started your meal on Shabbat and Shabbat ends and you're still eating Sudash Lishit, you didn't do Birkat Hamazon yet, you don't have to stop. You can continue as long as you want. When you're done, you say, you say Birkat Hamazon, you say Havdalah. So that means that the removal of Shabbat, so to speak, doesn't, doesn't force you to stop eating. The, the introduction of Shabbat, the beginning of Shabbat, forces you to stop eating. Okay. But it's, but it's still continuing. In other words, it, 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 with regards to the eating, but if you were to do a malacha after that, you would right. be violating Shabbat. Shabbat is over, right. right. And this, is only, this only means that you don't have to stop your Sudash Lishit in the middle of Al but everybody would agree that you are not allowed to start eating at that time. Once Shabbat, once you're already past sunset on Saturday afternoon, we, we give ourselves a little bit more leeway, let's say, you know, uh, 10, 15 minutes after sunset. But still, you're not allowed to start eating anymore. You just don't have to stop. But you can't start because the obligation of Abdullah has already come into the picture. Okay? And he says, When we psak nami lo amaran, ela bachila. And similarly, when we said that you don't have to stop, we meant only with regard to a su'udah, if you're eating. But if you're just sitting around drinking wine on Saturday afternoon, and the sun goes down, and Shabbat is ending, you have to stop. And moreover, And when we we said that you have to stop drinking, we meant only if you're drinking wine or beer. But if you're drinking water, you don't have to stop. So what's the basic halachic parameters here? So basically what the Gemara is saying is like this. If the sun has already set, Shabbat is already on its way out, the sun has already set, it's already, the stars are coming out, you're not allowed to start eating a meal. But if you started eating a meal before the sunset, you can continue as long as you want. Just like we do with Sudash Lishit every week, usually we start Sudash Lishit right before sunset and we can continue past sunset and that's fine however once the sun is set you can't start eating now what happens if you started drinking before the sunset there once the sun sets you have to stop drinking if it's any beverage other than water water you're allowed to drink even after the sun goes down according to this why because of shifwat no just because once the sun goes down really you have to start being concerned about havdalah but drinking water is not really considered enjoyment you're not you know you're not enjoying it you're drinking it because you're thirsty that's different. But after that, they need to argue about it. Right, they're going to argue about that in a second. <clears throat> There's a difference of opinion. So, Upliga de Ravuna Chazye Lahu Gavra, the Shata Maya Kodem Havdala, because Rav, this disagrees with Ravuna, because Ravuna once saw somebody drinking water before Havdala. Amar, they said to him, Lombis Tefe Marmi Askara, are you not afraid of the disease of Askara, which was some kind of throat disease that would choke you? The Tanam Mishme, the Rebbe Akiva, they taught in the name of Rebbe Akiva, Kolatoim Klum, Kodem Shiavdil, Mitatoba Askara, because Rebbe Akiva said that if you taste anything before Havdala, you're going to have this terrible death of Askara. Now, it doesn't mean that you get the death penalty for tasting food before Havdalah. What it means is that if you're going to die for some other reason, the punishment might be midah keneged midah that, it's, that just like you tasted something in your throat that you weren't supposed to, that your death could be from something in the throat. Not because that means that you're going to die because you ate before Havdalah. That's not what it means. Ravashi, the rabbis of the yeshiva Ravashi, they were not particular about drinking water. In other words, they held that what Rabbi Akiva meant was, you can't eat or drink food that's tasty. But water that doesn't really have taste, it's simply to quench thirst, that you're allowed to drink. Just like before tefillah, everybody agrees. Even the most strict opinion agrees you can drink water before tefillah in the morning because water is considered just to quench your thirst. It doesn't have any taste. It's not something that you drink for enjoyment um, for its own sake. You drink it really because you're thirsty. Um, that's why it says, So it says in Masechet Berachot, A person who drinks water because he's thirsty, he says, Because right? some people will even drink water just because you're supposed to. 
You're supposed to drink eight glasses of water. I'm not thirsty, but you're supposed to. You know, they drink it. So the so in a, so the uh, so before havdalah, and the Shulchan Aruch actually brings this position as the halacha that you're allowed to drink water before havdalah if you're very thirsty, just nothing else. Okay, and not allowed to eat anything else. Ba'amine Ravina Rav Nachman Ravina asked Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak the following question: Mishlo Kiddush Berav Shabbat Moshi Kiddush Valech Kol Yom Kulo. A person didn't make kiddush on Friday night. Can they make kiddush Saturday morning? But about Saturday afternoon, right? So it's true, they can. It, it, this happens sometimes to people. This happened to a friend of mine once, on fri- a, a group of friends of mine, that, that Purim was on Friday, so they were drunk. And they all fell asleep. And then they didn't wake up in the night to say Kiddush. They woke up in the morning. They had to say Kiddush in the morning. So the Alachai Amar Lehi said to him, Since Rabbi Chia said, or the sons of Rabbi Chia said rather, that somebody who didn't make Havdalah Saturday night can continue to make Havdalah throughout the week. So too, somebody who didn't make Kiddush on Friday night should be able to make Kiddush during the day. It's the same as Havdalah. Now we know that there is a limit on Havdalah, which is up to Tuesday. But here they're not dealing with that yet. They'll bring that up later. Eitzvay, there is an objection. Lele Shabbat v'yelele Yom Tov. Yesh ben Kiddush HaLakos. The nighttime of Shabbat and the nighttime of, of Yom Tov has Kiddush on a cup. Now, when it says Kiddush on a cup, it doesn't mean saying Borei Priya Gefen. Because uh, Borei Priya Gefen, you say, even during the daytime. But what it means is, in the nighttime, there's a Kiddush with the Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Am, Verom Emanu Mikol Lashon, or it means Asher Kiddush Anu Batzav Verat Tzavano, Veshabat Kot Shecha Be'avav Raton Hinch, etc., etc. So, that's the nighttime Kiddush. V'yesh Behen Hazkara, Bebirkat Amazon. And you also mention, Yalev Yavo for Yom Tov, you mention Ritze for Shabbat. Shabbat Yom Tov, but the daytime of Shabbat and Yom Tov in Ben Kiddush Alakos. You do not say Kiddush in the morning on Shabbat or Yom Tov. Meaning to say, you don't say a long Kiddush. You only say Borei Priya Gefen. You do not say Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Am. You don't say Asher Kiddush Anu Bumitzvot Haverat Zavano, etc. V'yesh ben Azkara Birkat Amazon. However, you still say Ritze in Birkat Amazon. You still say Yalev Yavo in Birkat Amazon. If you're going to tell me that somebody who neglected to say Kiddush on Friday night should say Kiddush on Shabbat day, Shabbat v'yom tov nami mashkachat lehu v'yesh ben Kiddush alakos. So then why does this Brita say that there's no Kiddush over a cup on Shabbat day? It's not true. Sometimes there is Kiddush on a, on a cup on Shabbat day. De'i lo Kiddush me'orta mekadesh lemachar. That if the person doesn't say Kiddush on Friday night, they say Kiddush on Shabbat day. How is Kiddush related to Ritzi or Yalaviyah? No, it's not really. It's just describing differences or similarities between Shabbat and Yom Tov. Not direct. It's, I mean, uh, I shouldn't say that. I, there is a connection, obviously, because Kiddush and, 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 Birka, and the mentioning in Birkat Amazon are both ways that we express the uniqueness of the day. One is through the Kiddush before the meal. One is through Birkat Amazon, you know, after the meal, so they, so there is a connection, right? Right, there is a connection. I mean, it, it's overstating it to say there's no connection. One is the beginning of the meal, one is the conclusion of the meal, and they both reflect the uniqueness of the day. So that's why they're being related to one another. So it's not totally random, not totally random. But the obligations are totally are, are different obligations. That's true. Um, but yeah, that you could see why they would be put together. But what the Gemara is questioning is why are you making such a blanket statement? Ain behen kiddush alakos. There's no kiddush during the daytime on Shabbat. But that's not true. There could be if somebody forgot. Ah, so you see from this brayta that there's no kiddush during the day if you forgot at night. So Amar Lei said back to him, Idi lo katane, the i lo katane. That if you didn't. It's written. In other words, the only time that you say Kiddush uh, is during the day is when you didn't do it at night. But did the Brayta talk about a case where you messed up? No, this Brayta is talking about in a normal case. In a normal case, is there Kiddush during the day? A full Kiddush? No. So as Rashbam explains on the bottom, Ditana lo bal lahorod lanu din adam haposhea. In other words, this Brita is not talking about the case where somebody messed up and they didn't say Kiddush. That, yes, you can say it during the day. Our Brita is talking about a case where he didn't mess up. In a normal case, Friday night is Kiddush, not daytime. But that doesn't go against the idea that if you messed up on Friday night, that during the day you do, in fact, say Kiddush. Etimei, there is an objection, Kvod Yom, Uchvod Laila, Kvod Yom Kodem. That if you have 
honor of the day of Shabbat and honor of the night of Shabbat. In other words, if you are going to bring special dishes for Shabbat, special meal for Shabbat, special delicacies for Shabbat, we put the honor of the day ahead of the honor of the night. In other words, focus on the daytime when it comes to kavod. However, However, if you have only one cup of wine, you might be thinking to yourself, what should I do with my one cup of wine? Honor of the day is more important than honor of the night. Maybe I should make, I should say the kiddush, right? I should skip kiddush then. So it says, no, you should say kiddush at night. Okay, she should take Kiddush Hayom as we turn to Kufay Amud Bed. Because true, when you're measuring Kavod versus Kavod, when is the greater Kavod, the greater honor of Shabbat? Daytime. But Kiddush is more important than Kavod. Kiddush is a separate mitzvah. Zachorat Yom HaShavad HaKadosh It's a very It's a separate mitzvah It's a mitzvah Min Torah So we put We give it precedence Ve'im ita And if it's true Like what you're saying That you could say Kiddush Actually during the day So then Lish beke Ad lemachar Ve'le'avid be'tarte Why don't you just do this You can hit two birds With one stone Skip Kiddush On Friday night Save it for the daytime that way you get kavod of the daytime because you have your cup of wine in the daytime and you get kiddush during the daytime. Because you're telling me that if you skip kiddush at night, you can do it during the day. Ah, so what's the obvious answer you're going to tell me? Right, you don't do that, right? Right, a mitzvah is best at the right time. We don't say, oh, let's push off the mitzvah so that we can hit two birds with one stone. We don't economize when it comes to mitzvah like that. We say when the opportunity presents itself, chaviva mitzvah b'sha'ata. Okay, so that's why, that's why we do Kiddush. So even though we're not going to have the same level of... Even though it would have been possible, in other words, to save the Kiddush for the daytime. Because in fact, if you forget Kiddush on Friday night, you can say it during the daytime. Still, we say, don't do it. It's don't do it. It's better to do it Bishata. But now the Gemara says, Umi Amrina and Chaviva Mitzvah Bishata. Do we really say that a mitzvah is always better in its proper time. But we learned in a Baraita the following. That somebody who enters their house on Motzei Shabbat should say the blessing on the wine. And then on Borei Meorei Ha'esh. And then Bisamim Vachar Kach Omer Havdala Lakos. And then he says Havdala Lakos. This is going according to Rebbe Meir's interpretation of Beit Hillel. Not the definitive interpretation, because Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda have an argument about the machloket between Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai that we learned a, a, a daf or two ago. That uh, I think it was two dafim ago. That Rabbi Meir holds that Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel both say that you do you do borei meorei ha'esh first, then bisamim. But we follow the version of Rabbi Yehuda that said that Beit Hillel says actually it's Bisamim and then, and then Borei Meorei Ha'esh. But in any case, the point here is not that. The point here is that a person comes home from synagogue on Saturday night. There are two things he needs to do. Number one, he has to do Havdalah. Number two, he has to do Seudah Revi'it. He's going to have dinner, right? He's going to eat something. So what do you do if he has only one cup of wine? So it says, Now, this is talking according to the opinion that it's a requirement to say, Birkat Amazon Alakos, which is a big machloket. Some Rishonim hold, actually, it's a machloket, even machloket Rishonim. Some Rishonim hold that it's an obligation to say, uh, say Birkat Amazon on, on a cup of wine. Some say it's optional. Okay, the Shulchan Aruch brings both views. He says, Some say and some say. Right? So it's a, it's a machloket. Generally, people are not that machmir about it, but there are some people who are very stringent about it. So, what's the, but what's the idea here? The, the Gemara or the Brita is saying something really crazy on the surface. Because it's saying, if you come home, so much does this Brita hold that you need to do wine at Birkat Amazon, that it's saying, if you come home for Havdalah, you didn't say Havdalah yet. And it's saying, eat dinner first with, with bread. Before you make Abdallah, so that when you say Birkat Amazon, you can say Birkat Ayayin for the Birkat Amazon and Abdallah. But how can you be bringing this argument when it's a minority argument? Well, it's, but it doesn't indicate that it is. That point, it doesn't indicate that it is. No. So, so it sounds like that's what's agreed on. In fact, I'll tell you what the, what the Shulchan Aruch says in a second. <clears throat> so, so what's the point? So according to you that you're telling me, why don't we delay Kiddush till the daytime of Shabbat? 
if we have only one cup of wine. That way we can have honor of the day and we also get Kiddush Hayom during the day. It's no problem. Why don't we do that? Oh, because once a mitzvah presents itself on Friday night, you should do it right away. A mitzvah is best in its proper time. So wait a second. You came home from synagogue. What's the mitzvah on you right now? Havdalah. Why don't we say, say Havdalah right away with that one cup of wine that you have and then have dinner. Why are you saying eat dinner first before Havdalah, which you normally wouldn't do, and then say... Birkat Amazon, and then say Havdalah, it's backwards. Yeah. So the Gemara says, Amar Lay, rather, it wasn't the Gemara that said this, but the, uh, the, it's, it's a conversation going back and forth. So he said to him, Ana lo ma'a, ana, I'm not a wise person. Velo choza ana, and I'm not a seer, I'm not a prophet. Velo yahida ana, and I'm not special. In other words, I'm not saying this as my own personal opinion. Ela gamarna visadarna ana. All I did was learn the tradition and organize it. The chen morin bebe midrasha kivati, shani lan ben iule yoma la apuke yoma iule yoma kol kamadim mekadminan le adif o mechavavinan le apuke yoma miacharinan le kieche delo leheve alan katuna. So basically, he says like like this: He's don't blame me, don't shoot the messenger. Right? I didn't come up with this. I'm not such a wise guy. I'm, a, I'm not a prophet. Right? Rashi says, this is what I heard as the tradition. The Rashbam brings another interpretation of what this means. That, uh, that, uh, that it means that actually I studied this area and researched it. I'm not just saying this off the cuff. I, but, but the point is, this is the tradition. That there's a difference between the beginning of Shabbat and the end of Shabbat. Beginning of Shabbat, we say, the sooner you bring it in, the better. That's the best. But Apuke Yoma. When you're saying goodbye to Shabbat, the more you can delay it, the better. Because if you do have the law first, what are you saying? You want Shabbat to be over. Okay, so that's that's a, not nice. That's an argument that can stand on its own. Why do right. you need all of these other... Uh, what other ones? In other words, the, the other arguments of, of uh, you know... Comparing the Avdala to the to the Kiddush or, or or comparing you know when you say it with the Jews and when you don't. Uh, well, he's trying to bring that. In other words, he's, the question was, yeah, why don't you do Avdala right away, just like you would do Kiddush right away? You wouldn't wait till tomorrow because, to because and because use your cup. In other words, over there you were going to also get two benefits because you're going to do Kiddush and also honor the daytime. Here you get two benefits. You're going to delay the Havdalah and you're also going to have Birkat HaMazon on the coast. Yeah, so so the there you do it. You, you delay the Havdalah. Right. But in the Kiddush, what, you don't delay the Kiddush. Right. So what's the difference? So now he gives the explanation. Right, exactly. So what I'm saying is that that argument can stand on its own. It doesn't it's the conclusion. Right. right, this is the conclusion that, that Chaviva Mitzvah Bishata is where we want, where sooner is a greater Kavod. Right. Where sooner shows the belovedness. So Kiddush is a welcoming of Shabbat. So the sooner you do it, the more belovedness there is. Havdalah is getting rid of Shabbat. Right. So the more you delay it, the more kavod it is. Right. That's why, for instance, where, what's an application of this halakha that, that's actually coming very soon? On, on uh, Motzei Shabbat of Chanukah. What's the halakha in the Beit Knesset? You light the Ne'er Chanukah first, before Havdalah. Why? Because we want to delay the, the goodbye to Shabbat. Even though we're lighting candles, which you can't do on Shabbat. We want to lengthen the Shabbat. We want to lengthen the Shabbat. So even though you're lighting candles, which you can't do on Shabbat, Shabbat has to be over, yeah, but, but you're leaving one aspect of Shabbat still yeah, in place, which is the Havdalah. And you did Havdalah already. Uh, in a way, in the Tfilah. Right, right, right. right. so. But the point is, you're leaving a little bit of the Havdalah along, you know, a little bit of it. Yeah. There. So, so that. On Saturday night. Saturday night. You do Nerot Chanukah before Havdalah in the synagogue. And that's what you do. So, so that's what we don't want to make it look like a burden. Like, oh, thank God, Shabbat is over. Let's do the Havdalah right away. Right. That's not that's not Chaviva Mitzvah B'Shata because this Mitzvah is. It's like saying uh, we should. Uh, I don't know. A- Any time where the result is negative, we don't say Chaviva Mitzvah B'Shata. Someone's going to get a divorce. Oh, let's resign Maktimin right, 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 right. You know, let's. Right. let's <laughs> Right, it is a mitzvah. Not thing that you want to run. Right, right. it's a mitzvah that that, that uh, you know one of the tariyak mitzvot is gerushin. So yeah. we should say, oh, mizrizim maktim in the mitzvot. <laughs> that's a question. Right. I mean, you know, no, the, the Rishonim the talk about that. They say, why shouldn't everybody? Right. If you, you want to fulfill every mitzvah, so you should. Also, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a legitimate question. Mm-hmm. You know. I mean, once it's so it says there's, and, right, there's and, certain mitzvot where it's not. It's On the contrary, the Gemara says the first wife, you really, you know, it's a very big deal to try to delay it. Right. So that, so um, anyway, so that, but the point is that here it's not, it's not a kavod to do it fast. So shema mina meham matnitin 
Tzimane. You learn eight talachot from this one bright tabba coming home on Saturday night. Eight talachot. You get, this is really, you're getting eight for the price of one. This is a serious, a very good sale. But is the, uh, what are the eight talachot? Shema mina, first of all, hamavdil batfila tzarch shavdil alakos. Because this person came from Bet Knesset. He came from the synagogue. So obviously he said, atachon antanu in his tefillah. He still has to say, you have the la, when he gets home. It, it's not a substitute. He still has to say, have the la and the wine. We also learn berachat onakos. You see that according to this Baraita, in or, birkat mazon requires kos yain. You need a kos yain because it's so important to have a cup of wine for birkat mazon that you even delay the havdalah till after you eat in order to have it. But they don't say anything about the three, <coughs> the, the three people, which Tosfot here says. Where's that? Right, and that, yeah. right, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the Shulchan Aruch, really, if you look at the Rishonim, they don't make such a distinction between when, when there's a Zimun and when there isn't, but the Arizal came along and said you shouldn't do, it's from the Arizal. If you look in the, if you look in the, in the Shulchan Aruch, in the commentaries there, uh, from what I remember, I, I, it's been a while, but they, uh, they bring, the Arizal was the one who said don't do it on a uh, Biyachid. I don't know why. Yeah, so that that comes from him. So Shmamina, and what's the other thing we learned? Kos shel brachat that there's a measurement of revi'it. There has to be a measurement of the kos shel bracha. Why do you see that from this brayta? Because if you didn't need a measurement, why can't we just split the cup of wine into two? You have one cup of wine, so do half in one cup, half in the other cup, half for havdalah, half for the uh, brachat amazon. From the fact that you can't do that, that means there must be a minimum shi'ur, a minimum measurement of wine. That's why you can't split it. We furthermore learn. We see that somebody who says the blessing on the wine has to drink. Because if he didn't have to drink, then he could say Havdalah on the cup of wine, not take a sip of it, and then use it for Berkat Amazon. That's only for Havdalah. Ah. That's not the case. Well, that's what it's saying. It's saying, you see, you need to taste. Because if you didn't need to taste, no, somebody has to taste, even Kiddush, somebody, somebody has to. Has to taste. Right. right. So the point is, somebody has to you. taste. Right. right. It doesn't be you. But somebody has to taste. Um, yeah, neither in Kiddush or Havdalah do you have to taste. The only time that really it's important to taste is during the daytime, because it's just Borei Priya Geffen. It's more important during the day. During the nighttime, you really, you'll say even without tasting. Um, so Havdalah, also you need to taste, because if you didn't need to taste, then you could do the Havdalah on the cup of wine and then use it for Berkat Amazon. No problem. Vishma minan, you also learn from here. Tamo pigamo. Once you taste it, you ruin it. You spoil the cup. How do you know that? Because if that were not the case, then why can't you do this? Say havdalah, take a tiny taste that doesn't diminish the measurement, and then use it for berkat amazon. Nope. Once you've tasted, backwash. You know, it's pagum. You can't use it again. Ushma mina. So, so there are opinion that say it's actually better to use the same cup. They're, they're, they're uh, uh, Why is it better? On that. I don't know, but uh, I, I know that I mean, I'm not talking from the Gemara, but from uh, the. When you the, taste the, it, you mean? That. <clears throat> I think. I you know when this becomes majority, a problem? I think the majority of opinions say you have to use a brand new cup and. You should, it. yeah, you should wash it, yeah. But there are some opinions that say it's actually better not to use a new cup. I never heard that. And to add to the. Oh, you know you what you're thinking of? Something I was just thinking of, you're thinking of the same thing, which is Arbako Sot of Pesach. That's where you have a problem. In other words, Arba Kosot of Pesach, you have the issue that you drink from the wine. It's now Kos Pagum. Right? If you drink the entire cup, let's say, of, one, of the first cup, so, and all that's left on the bottom is just residue of wine, now the Halakha views that as a dirty cup. So you How can you use that for Kosheni? Now you have to go and you have to wash it and you have to... So that's why they say what you should do is just drink. Don't drink the whole thing. Just drink the majority of the cup. Leave some. So now you're refilling. It's not Kospagum. Kospagum, maybe it, w- it wouldn't be on the level of Kospagum. You don't have to rewash it out. That's, I think, what you're thinking of. So, but well, here it's, it's not saying that. Here it's saying even if you taste it... Like between, between uh, you know, Friday night, Shabbat and Abdallah... You shouldn't clean the cup? They say I never heard that. Wow, I never heard that. Maybe it's a Kabbalistic yeah. uh, thing. So, I mean, it's obviously Could be, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, Ta'amo Pigamo. So, from here we see, though, that once you taste it, you ruined it, and that's why you can't taste it for Havdalah and reuse it. Ushmami we also learn. Ta'am Mavdil. That even though a person is eaten, we're going to see there's a big machloket about this coming up. That whether if a person Saturday night eats before Havdalah, can they still say Havdalah? Okay? Because the whole question is Havdalah is like Kiddush. In other words, once you say atachon nantanu in tefillah, you're allowed to do malachah, you're allowed to drive home and make, uh, make up the lot home, no problem. 
Atachonantanu allows you to do malachot. So what about Havdalah? It's similar to Kiddush. It allows you to eat. Right? Just like Kiddush on Friday night, you're not allowed to eat until you have Kiddush. Havdalah on Saturday night, you're not allowed to eat or you're not supposed to eat until you have Havdalah. So it's like that. So what happens if a person already ate? So there's one opinion, as we're going to see in the Gemara, that says, too late. So now what's the point of making Havdalah now? What's the point of making Havdalah? You already ate your weekday eating, so it's over already. We don't hold that. We say that you still make Havdalah. But, the, but you see from this bright, the Ta'am Mavdil, even if a person ate something already, they can still say Havdalah because you see that this person comes home, they actually have dinner, and then they make Havdalah. Ushma Mina, and the last thing that we learn is, I'm not, it's not the last thing yet. Ushma Mina. And we also learn, Bet Kiddushot Al Kosechad, Omer Bet Kiddushot Al Kosechad. You can say, if the only thing you have, as we learned earlier, two Dapim ago, if the only thing you have is one cup of wine, you're allowed to do two mitzvot with the one cup, if that's all that you have. Ushma Mina, Bet Shamaihi, Va'alibad Rebbe Yehuda. And you also see that it's Bet Shamai, according to the opinion of Rebbe Yehuda. What does that mean? That, that in this Braita, the, um, it's following Beit Shammai because it's saying that you should according to Rebbe Meir both, Rebbe, both Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai agree that you do fire before Besamim but according to uh, Rebbe Yehuda only Beit Shammai holds that you do Borei Meoreya Esh before Besamim and that Braita is reflecting the opinion of uh, is reflecting the opinion of uh, of the uh, of of Beit Shammai then because it, if it's going according to Rabbi Yehuda then it must be reflecting the opinion of uh, of Beit Shammai because uh, because according to Rabbi Yehuda only Beit Shammai holds that now if, if you look at the Rashbam on the side he says Okay, so, and why do we have to say that this is Rabbi Yehuda and not Rabbi Meir? So he, in other words, he's explaining, why don't we say that this is Rabbi Meir according to Beit Hillel? Because according to Rabbi Meir, everybody holds Ma'or uh, is before, Moria uh, Ish is before Bisamim. So the answer is because uh, of the idea of doing Birkat mazon before Havdalah. Because it was Rabbi Yehuda that says that everyone holds, you should do Birkat mazon and then Havdalah. Because it says, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Lo nechlaku bet shamayu bet hilel al mazon she batchila, vel Havdalah she basof. Alma Rabbi Yehuda hi, valiba de bet shamay. So that's, so because he's the one who said that everyone holds, you do Havdalah, you do Birkat mazon and then you do Havdalah. So that's Rabbi Yehuda, and so therefore this is according to Beit Shammai, this whole piece here. So what does the Shulchan Aruch say though? The Shulchan Aruch b- brings a couple of practical halachot here. He says that it depends. If you hold like the side, because again the Shulchan Aruch doesn't decide on this, he leaves it as a two opinions. If you hold that Perkat Mazon requires a kos, requires, uh, it must be said, on a cup of wine, so then this Braita is correct. If a person comes home and has only one cup of wine left, then they would, say, they would eat their dinner, say Birkat HaMazon with the cup, and then go into Havdalah from that. That's what the, however, the Shulchan Aruch says, if you hold, like the view, that Birkat HaMazon does not require a cup of wine, which is what, like, we don't always require that. So then you wouldn't do this. You would go, you would use your cup of wine for Havdalah when you came home, and then eat. You know, I guess the other thing that you learned from here is that it's possible to actually, uh, to actually uh, trump a halacha for another halacha. Is- <laughs> based on something that is a minority opinion that you happen to hold. Right. Well, in this, I mean, from a lot of the sugiot, it seems like there was, it wasn't such a minority opinion. It was really two significant schools of thought because the idea that Birkat Amazon requires a coast appears in many braytot and many, uh, many places. It seems like so a very, very strong yeah. view. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a strong yeah. view. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't call it just a simple minority opinion. So, that, so it's, it's a strong position. Okay. So, the, so that's what the Shulchan Aruch says. It says it's all gonna re- it's all gonna depend on this machloket, what you hold about this machloket. Right. And then also with regard to Ta'am Mavdil, we'll learn more about it in the, in the upcoming uh, sugyot. But basically, according to the Shulchan Aruch, he holds like this, that if a person eats before for Havdalah on Saturday night, he still can make Havdalah. <clears throat> Provided that he said Atachonantanu. Let's say a person forgot Atachonantanu and then ate also. Now he says he has to go back and say Arvit again. Really? Mm-hmm. He says either you have to do Havdalah right or you have to do Atachonantanu right. You say Arvit again. <clears throat> yeah, isn't that interesting? Interesting. 
In other words, he holds, you have to do one of them correctly. So if you did atahon and tanu and then you messed up and you ate before havdalah and the wine, fine. If you didn't say atahon and tanu but you said havdalah and the wine before you ate anything, fine. But if you messed up both, you didn't say atahon and tanu and then you ate before havdalah, yeah. now you got to go back to say arvid again. Not the whole arvid, meaning the amidah of arvid and say atahon and tanu. Even though you already broke the Shabbat. <clears throat> yeah. Because you failed to do either one of the forms of Havdalah Ketikuna. You didn't do either one the proper way, so you have to go back to the drawing board.